Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and just one quick announcement. We're starting a new series of certification classes in September, Food Over Medicine Certification and Certification to Offer Wellness Farm Programs. So contact us if you're interested in either of those things. All right, so I chose two things to talk about today, one for women and one for men. And I guess the, um, the theme is that incompetence is not limited in the medical field to only being applied to women or men. It's both, okay? So I figured we'd give everybody equal time today. All right, so the first thing is mammography. I'm returning to this because we have a new version of mammography that's being touted as being so beneficial. Now here's why I think this is going on. Mammography is a very big business in the United States right now. Eight billion in the United States alone, worldwide even bigger. And there are so many studies and so much conversation is going on right now about the inadvisability of widespread preventive screening um, using mammography that I think that these people who promote this are a little nervous about hanging on to their market share. So now they have a new thing that they've introduced. It's 3D mammography, which is also known as tomosynthesis. The testing procedure is almost identical to mammography, except that with a standard mammogram, the machine sits still, whereas with this version, um, the machine moves around the breast, taking lots of different pictures at different angles. Um, it's been approved since 2011, but really starting to gather a lot of momentum right now. Proponents say that this particular technology will result in fewer false positives and will catch more cancers earlier. And they point to a recent article in the Journal of the American Medical Association that basically alludes to that. But an editorial written by experts, experts who were not associated with the study says that the results are not definitive and we need some more research, basically unproven. Eda Pisano, one of the authors of the editorial, said that the study's results were questionable since the researchers just just looked at historical records instead of doing the randomizing that we really need to, to do to make sure that this is advantageous for patients. And you, you might remember all the messages I did on Gotchke's book on mammography, which we're going to cover in advanced study, by the way, in August. Um, one of his one of the biggest things he spent all that all the time in the book on was taking apart faulty studies that weren't designed properly that show the benefit of mammography. If you get rid of the junk science on mammography, there's not much left that looks worthwhile. Now, Hologic, a company called Hologic, is the maker of the machine. It's the only approved maker of this particular machine paid for the study and retained the right to review the results before the article was published. And where are the journal editors when this stuff is going on? I mean, there's just misbehavior all over the place. Well, it doesn't appear that the medical profession is listening to any caution where this is concerned. According to Hologic's spokesperson, 1,100 mammography centers now offer this new 3D mammogram. The cost of the units to do this, $500,000. That's over two times the cost of a traditional mammography machine. The, custom, the company estimates that this year, 2014, six million women in the United States alone will have this particular test. And of course, the, the cost is gonna be higher because they have to recoup the cost of getting the machine. Not all insurers are covering it at this time, but what always happens in this situation is patients scream and holler and the advocacy groups get involved and a couple of lawsuits get filed and eventually the insurance companies have to pay for it. So no wonder our premiums keep going up and the results keep getting worse. Well, there was a small number, a small increase in the number of invasive cancers discovered using 3D mammography in that study in JAMA. But one of the disturbing things was that the uh, results were so variable from site to site. There were 13 mammography centers that were involved in this particular study. Some had fewer recalls, some had more, some had fewer unnecessary biopsies, some had more. So the bottom line is that, and I read the study, it, it really doesn't definitively make a case for 3D mammography. Um, the only good news I could find in it is that it didn't seem to increase the risk of uh, being diagnosed with ductal carcinoma in situ, which is really pseudo cancer, very rarely turns into anything clinically significant. But I don't advise women to have this test. Um, please don't get carried away with all of the news releases that are basically sponsored or promoted by um, the companies that the company that makes the machine and the providers of mammography to make uh, women think that oh yeah all those studies that are about traditional mammography but we have this new thing over here so even though the old studies show that the old technology is not so good this is better it's not better don't do it all right I so said we give equal treatment so here we go for the guys 
Um, men are encouraged to get PSA tests. And one of the problems with PSA tests is that they often result in more tests after that and biopsies and treatment for pseudo cancers that are unlikely to result in death. It's the same thing that happens to women when they get mammograms. I suggested for a long time that we ought to suspend the use of this test until doctors learn how to interpret the results more responsibly. Um, at one point in time, I thought, no PSA testing ever. I have become convinced by my colleague, Dr. Mark Schultz, uh, that there is some usefulness for the test, but the harm comes from doctors just not knowing to do what to do with the test results. So every year, millions of men are given treatment that uh, doesn't necessarily extend their lives, but really diminishes their quality of life. Uh, particularly uh, the use of hormone suppression, hormone blockade drugs uh, that can reduce the, uh, the production of testosterone. The side effects of this include impotence and an increased risk of many conditions including diabetes and bone loss. There isn't much evidence to support this treatment in a new study which included tens of thousands of men with early stage prostate cancer who were followed for as long as 15 years concluded that men who get the therapy don't live any longer than men who don't. The lead researcher said, I would say that for the majority of patients with localized prostate cancer, this is not a good option, but millions of men have been put through this option. Another person commented, Dr. James McKiernan from Columbia Medical Center, said it, this isn't the first study to suggest that there's no added benefit to this therapy, but there are still a fair number of doctors recommending it and patients receiving it. That's part of the problem. It doesn't matter what the research says. It doesn't matter how many studies say that something's a bad idea. We just can't seem to get doctors to stop doing things that aren't a good idea. Hormone suppression, which is essentially chemical castration, can shrink tumors or slow their growth. And in advanced prostate cancer um, cases, it is sometimes a good idea. I will acknowledge that there is some evidence to support its use. But 250,000 new cases of prostate cancer are being diagnosed every year. 90% of these are low risk, early stage, not metastasized cancers. And using this technology or this, um, this drug treatment, chemical castration on these folks is overkill. Um, and, and in older men, it's even worse because some of these elderly men are gonna die with the disease, not of it, but 25% of older men get this, uh, this drug treatment. These men um, are not likely to die of prostate cancer, but the effect of the drug treatment may make them wish they died sooner anyway. When you think about impotence and uh, increased risk of fractures and diabetes and heart disease, I mean, we just can't justify doing this. So men, you hear me talk all the time about women avoiding mammography. Men, you should be just as cautious about PSA testing. And if you've already had a PSA test that indicates that you might have a problem, don't be so quick to, to do anything about it. Um, there is no need to jump on treatment right away. Sometimes there's no need to do anything at all, but take some time, take a deep breath, get some information before you start going down the path of unnecessary treatment that is likely to alter your life in some pretty miserable ways and often not uh, reversible. So that's all for today. Um, as usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it and I will be back to you next week.